So, pointing my camera across the room at a screen, there's a horizontal line. Is this line at eye level to the camera? Don't worry, we'll get back to that. Many flat earthers like to claim that using an auto level to prove the globe is void because auto levels have a range limitation. Flat earthers don't want to realize that the recommended maximum range of the device has to do with its zoom level and the ability to read the surveyor's staff beyond that distance. However, it has nothing to do with the fact that an auto level will still sight a straight line as far as the eye can see, making it a perfectly useful tool for proving the globe. Same camera, same screen, is this eye level to the camera? This is a strip of straight styrofoam with a measuring tape on it. I propped up a Lego on one end, which is 9.7 centimeters long. This time of morning, that Lego casts a shadow longer than the 71 centimeters of styrofoam. Even if the shadow ended at the 71 centimeters, this would mean that the flat Earth sun with an altitude of 5,000 kilometers would have to be over 15,000 kilometers beyond the edge of flat Earth and not between the tropics of Capricorn and Cancer, as the Flat Earth model suggests. Still haven't moved the camera. Is this line at eye level with the camera? Flat Earthers want you to believe that if the moon was reflecting the sun's light, it would have a hot spot. Instead of using the surfaces of real objects, ironically enough, they use CGI to demonstrate this by changing the specular level and the glossiness level of the surface being rendered. But when you film actual spherical objects with the sun, there are plenty of materials and surface types which would yield no hot spot whatsoever, such as the unweathered and pulverized rock surface of the moon. All right, last chance. Camera still hasn't moved. This is another line. Is this line at eye level with the camera? Many flat earthers like to say that boats and other objects don't go over the horizon, but rather blame the horizon for being the point of convergence or the ether band or compression, vanishing point, and even dirtier, when in fact the very common mirages that occur on the horizon are actually the result of weather conditions and the earth curving away from the observer. Let me demonstrate. This is the top of a car beyond a hill. See that hovering effect? Wait, now that the motorcycles are gone, now do you see the hovering effect? And as it gets closer, you can see the mirroring effect. Now you might say that this is a convergence point. Okay, let's zoom out and look at a closer hill and the same car. There's the mirroring effect. There's that little hovering effect. And then as it approaches the hilltop again, here's another hovering effect. And then the mirroring effect. We can repeat this all day. This smaller scale demonstration has to do with the street curving away from the observer and the effects that occur at those horizons. And I'm showing you two of them right behind each other. No magical convergence zone, just simply weather conditions and curvature. And by the way, none of these hilltops are at eye level. I'm looking up at both of them. 
I could do this all day. Speaking of eye level, Which one of the four lines did you say was at eye level for the camera? Let's show you the whole image, and then I'll turn on a laser level, which is aligned with the camera. If you guessed number three, you were accidentally right because you had no reference points to use. Even the center of the camera is not pointed at number three. Now if you want to complain that I was not actually pointing directly at number three, or that the footage was cropped, then you're getting the exact point of this demonstration. Without a reference point, you have no idea what direction the camera is pointing or if the footage has been cropped. So therefore, any photos of the horizon from high altitude balloons or even the ISS without having any kind of a reference point, you can't say that the horizon is at eye level. Y'all have a nice day. Oh my God.